Welcome to the Growing in Love for Life podcast, where it's all about saving and strengthening your marriage and creating the relationship you really deserve and want to have. And now, from growinginloveforlife.com, relationship and marriage coach and best-selling author, your host, Liam Naden. This is episode four of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. Welcome everyone, it's Liam Naden here. Thanks for joining me on this podcast. And today we're going to talk about something very interesting, which I've titled, The Only Thing You Need to Save Your Marriage. Now I hope you're intrigued by the title. But the interesting thing is that I, I meet people all the time who are very unhappy in their marriage. You know, they see it failing, That they really want to save it, they really want to get back to the happy times they had with their spouse. And they're often in a terrible situation. Their spouse might have already left them or is in the process of leaving them. Or maybe they're not talking to each other. There's constant arguments. And often there are other huge pressures in the equation as well, such as financial pressures and sometimes even health pressures. But they tell me, you know, our marriage is in a horrible state and I'm really unhappy I don't want it to end because I still love my wife or my husband, but I've tried everything and I just don't know what to do anymore. But the interesting thing is, with all of the people I talk to who are in a bad situation in their marriage and want to do something about it, no matter what their situation, I can pretty well tell them with almost 100% accuracy whether or not they're going to be able to save their marriage. So I guess you're wondering what that question is, but it's the real key to knowing how to save your marriage, and it's the only thing you need to know. So I'm presuming you're here listening to this because you want to save your marriage. So this is the question that you need to ask yourself, and that I would ask you if I was there, and I would say to you, have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? And I'll say that again, have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? Now, think about that question in your own situation. And you know, the reaction I get from people is, is really rather fascinating. Because usually what happens, people are explaining their situation to me. And then I said, OK, that's fine. And then I ask them a question. Have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? And that usually stops them right in their tracks. And a couple of things happen. Most often I get a list of reasons from people why they haven't been able to save their marriage. And, you know, they start to say things, well, I really want to, but I don't know how to save it. Or it's too late for my situation. Or I'm, I'm too tired. I'm just exhausted. I can't do it anymore. Or my husband or wife, they won't cooperate. They won't try and, and work on the marriage as well. And I say, OK, but look, I'm not really looking for reasons as to why your marriage is failing. I'm just asking you, have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? And for that question, people usually don't have an answer. Or the other thing is what they realize is that they haven't decided, probably because they haven't thought about it, but they haven't made the decision that they're going to save their marriage. And here's the thing, you're never going to to save your marriage. You're never going to get it back to where you want it to be until you make the commitment and the decision that you are going to. And that's what we're going to cover in this podcast about all of the reasons behind this and how this all works. But you've got to get to a stage where you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to save your marriage. You're going to do whatever it takes. And before you start thinking it all sounds a bit too hard, just stick with me here. I think you're going to find it's not actually that hard at all if you really understand what's going on. And I'm going to show you some ways to make that decision the right way for yourself. Okay, now the reason this question is the one thing you need to save your marriage, have you decided that you're going to save your marriage, is because it's, there's actually a very big difference between wanting to save your marriage and knowing that you're going to. And I'm sure you can see that that's probably true. But it all comes down to something called our beliefs. And our beliefs are obviously the things that we believe. But there's there's something very critical about this. And I'm only going to cover this particular section 
very briefly because it's quite detailed, but the reality is that whatever we do in our life is what gives us the results we have in our life. It's the way, it's how we behave that creates the results we get. And how we behave is what is based on what we think, what our thoughts are. And what our thoughts, where our thoughts come from, are based on what we believe, what we believe about things. And that includes not just our relationship, but everything else in our life as well. Okay, so it's our behavior that causes our result, results, but it's what we believe that causes our behavior. Now this also means you can change your results by changing your beliefs. And th as I said, this is a very deep subject to get into. We haven't got enough time to go into it here. Uh, it's something I go into in a very big way in my private coaching program. But, but just for the purposes of this podcast, I just thought I'd mention it because you're going to see how it relates to this vital question, have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? Okay, so let's come back to that question. Have you decided that you're going to save your marriage? And what were your thoughts when I first asked that question? Okay, now as I said a bit earlier, I, when I ask people this, I usually uh, get a reply from people that starts, well, I'd really like to save my marriage, but... So there's this magic word, but, and then I get a whole lot of reasons why things are the way they are. Well, I'd really like to save my marriage, but I've tried everything and nothing works. I'd really like to save my marriage, but my spouse has already left, or they're leaving, or they're, they're walking out the door as we speak. I'd really like to save my marriage, but my wife had an affair, or my husband had an affair, or they're having an affair. I'd really like to save my marriage, but they're just my husband and wife, husband or wife, is just not interested. They don't want to. Okay, now I always listen out for that because when I hear that word but, I know that everything after that word is what is really going on in that person's mind. So when they say, I'd really like to save my marriage, I don't listen to that bit. But what I hear is the reasons after. So for instance, I've but I've tried everything and nothing works. Okay, so what that person is saying is, I've tried everything and nothing works. That's their belief. And what people are really saying when they come up with all of these excuses and reasons why they haven't saved their marriage or why their marriage is falling apart, is what they're really saying is, I want to save my marriage, but actually, really deep down, I'm not sure that I really want to. I'm not sure that I really want to. And that is the real problem. And the reality is that if you want to save your marriage, you've got to move from wanting to, and you might be wanting to desperately to save your marriage. And you might, it might be consuming you with, with pain and hurt and stress. But you've got to move from wanting to save your marriage to knowing with certainty that you're going to. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I've got a bit of a process to show you how to do that, but there's also a worksheet that you can download and print on the website uh, www.liamnaden.com. Just look out for podcast episode number four and you'll see it there, um, which will just outline the, the process I'm going to show you to go from, from wanting to knowing. But just before we do, why would you want to do that? Well, Actually, several magical things start to happen when you move from wanting to do something to knowing that you're going to get there. And the first thing is it takes a lot of, pr a lot of pressure off you. Now, if you think about what happens when you really desperately want something to happen, what you're actually doing is telling yourself on a, on a very subtle but powerful level that you really can't have it. And it makes you quite stressed and depressed. So you're saying, oh, I'd really like that to happen. I, I just wish that could happen. I hope that could happen. I, I want to save my marriage. I want us to be happy. But on a very subconscious level, you're saying, I want us to be happy, but, but I'm really stressed because we're not happy, or I don't think we can be happy. So there's all sorts of underlying reasons you're giving yourself underneath in, in your subconscious mind as to why something isn't happening. And of course, that only reinforces the fact that it's not going to happen. But when you shift to knowing that you're going to get it, you begin to act in a completely different way. And I want to give you an example of this. If, if you think of, for instance, what's something you've really wanted in the past? And for most people, it's something, something big, such as 
maybe a house or a car. Now what tends to happen is, is um, if you think about the process of buying a new car or buying a new house, is you start off by really seeing the one you want and then you get into a state where you really want to have it. But you, you're probably not sure at that stage if you're going to get it. Maybe it's out of your price range, maybe if it's a house maybe somebody else is interested in it as well. And you, all of this uncertainty that you don't know that you're going to get it, but you really, really want it. But what happens, I'm sure you'd agree, is don't you, you get stressed by it, don't you? Oh, I really want that. I hope we can get that house. It'd be so wonderful. Oh, we've, you know, and you feel under pressure and you feel stressed by it because you don't know that you're going to get it. But remember when, think back, when the day comes when your finance is approved. You know, maybe you've, the, say for a house, the agreement has been signed. And yes, um, they will accept your offer. And then, then you go and get some finance for, uh, to pay for the house. And you don't know if that's going to get approved. But when it does, then you know you've got the house. And so you've got the money. You, you know with certainty that you're going to get it. You haven't moved in yet, but you know with certainty that you're going to get it. Now, I'm sure you'd agree, if you think back to then, doesn't your energy shift? Don't you move to a different place? Instead of being stressed and hoping you're going to get it and not sure you can, but and really, really want it, you move to a place of certainty that you are going to get it. So that's a much more positive place to be, isn't it? It's like all the pressure comes off, you get excited. You know, you start planning about what you're going to do when you move into the house. And you can really start seeing yourself with it. You can see yourself in that situation. So you, you're you acting and thinking and feeling in a completely different way than you were when you were stressed hoping you were going to get it. So this is exactly the same with deciding your marriage is you are going to save it and it's going to be great again. You know you're, you're no longer hoping that it's going to work out and getting stressed and really wanting it to work out. You're looking forward to the day when it is going to be great. Because you've committed with absolute certainty that you know that um, your marriage is going to be saved. So that's the first thing. It takes a lot of pressure off you. The second thing is it takes a lot of pressure off your spouse and your marriage. Because what happens is when you know with certainty, yes, you are going to restore the loving relationship you have with your partner. You are going to have a great marriage, no matter what's going on at the moment. When you know that then you stop acting in a needy way and you stop blaming your spouse or partner as well. You're just acting in a confident, happy, certain way that things are going to turn out well. And the funny of, funny thing is both of those, in, in not being needy and no longer blaming them, are, are going to be very positive things for your marriage. They will add to the attraction bring back the attraction between you and your your spouse, they're going to feel a lot more attracted to you if you're not acting in a needy way and you're not criticizing and blaming them all the time. So that's the second reason why this is so powerful when you go to a place of certainty. And the third thing is, in a funny sort of way, when you're expecting something to happen, when you know something's going to happen, somehow the right solutions to the problems and the, and the way to actually get there, start they just sort of start showing up. And you sort of have to go through this process a bit um, to know that's true. But maybe in, a, in some other area of your life, such as wanting a house or wanting something big, maybe you've noticed that happen, that when you got to the stage you just knew you were going to have it, then all of a sudden things just fell into place. And unexpected things came along which helped just make it happen. It really is the way it works. So how do we do this? So if we know that all you have to do is move from wanting to save your marriage to knowing you're going to, that's the only question left is how do you actually do this? Well on the worksheet I've outlined and I'm going to go through it here now, a four step process from really just getting you from hope to certainty. So here are the four steps and they're quite simple. Okay, they're not complicated, you're going to find them very easy and quite enjoyable. So step one, and this really is the most critical one of all. If there's anything difficult, this is, the, this is it, is just step one. And step one is you've got to decide if it's really what you want. You know, you've got to, you've got to go to a place within yourself and be totally honest with yourself and say, do I really want to save my marriage? 
And I'd say for a lot of people that I meet, even though they say they desperately do, on a very deep level they don't for all sorts of reasons. And I'm not saying, obviously, I'm not encouraging you down that track to say that you don't really want it, but you do need to be totally honest with yourself and decide that you actually do want to save it. And there's a couple of questions you can ask yourself. Obviously ask yourself, do I really want to save my marriage? And see what comes from your heart as an answer to that question. And you can also help by asking yourself, well, why, if, if the answer is yes, yes, I think I do want to save my marriage, why do I want to save my marriage? And start to write down a few reasons. Think about all of the reasons why you really do want to, want to save your marriage. And you're going to come up with a clear answer. Now, of course, whether you go with that answer or not is largely dependent on your level of fear. So if you decide that you want to end the, that really in your heart you do want to end the marriage, but you're not prepared to go through with that, it's probably based around some fears that you have about what might happen if you ended the marriage. And unfortunately we haven't got time to get into that in this podcast, but we will certainly get, at, get into that in a, in a future one. So that's the first thing, is to decide if you really do want to save your marriage. And it requires you to be totally honest and to go inside and remove your fears of what you think the outcome might be either way and come to that place of certainty, hopefully, or whatever's best for you is going to be the right answer, whether or not you want to save your marriage. Okay, so if you have decided that you want to save your marriage, then step two to get you to this place of certainty, well, you're actually already at the place of certainty aren't you? Because you've been through the, pro you've thought about it on a heart level, you know th what the true answer is, you know all the reasons why you've come to that decision, so you're actually already in that place of certainty. But there's three other things you can do to take that place of certainty into reality, and that is saving your, your marriage. So the second step is to stop making excuses for your current situation. In other words, stop all those but sentences. Remember what we were talking about? Well, I'd like to, but they won't cooperate. But I'm too tired. But I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. Nothing's working. Okay, you've got to stop making excuses. Because when you're in a place of certainty, there are no excuses. You just know that you're going to get there. So stop making excuses and thinking of all the reasons why your marriage is not working right now. So it means you have to be very careful with your thoughts and your words, with what you're thinking and what you're saying. So be very mindful of that, that that's going to have a big impact. So step number two, stop making excuses for your current situation, both to other people, but also mainly to yourself. Okay, well step number three, okay, is simply to start taking action. Now, if you know you're going to find the solution, you've got that certainty, all you need to do is just start taking some action. And of course, you know, a lot of people have a problem with this word action. It seems to be something that um, modern society discourages people from doing because we're brought up by the media to believe that you know you do something and you'll get instant wonderful results. And it's just not the way it works. And unfortunately, what happens is when people don't get results from taking action immediately, that mean, that stops them from taking further action. But you've just got to start taking one step at a time and doing things, taking some positive action. Remember, not making any excuses in your mind as to why it's not going to work, but just start taking some action one step at a time. And step four is simply just keep going with taking action until you get the result you want until your marriage is saved, till you're back together with your spouse and, th and your relationship is fulfilling, exciting, passionate and all those things you really want it to be. Now, this is where a lot of people really get bogged down, don't they? And that they get discouraged. They start to do things and things don't work and they say, oh, it'll never work. I've tried that. I've tried everything. And in an earlier podcast, if you've listened to those, you might recall I, I mentioned the thing about people say, well, they've tried everything and they haven't tried 10 things, let alone 100 things. But they ex And they expect um, to get a positive result when they haven't really tried very much. So what you've got to do is keep going until you get there. Keep 
taking action, knowing that you are going to get the result you're going to get, and just keep moving. And one thing I find very helpful in this regard, if you're feeling a bit discouraged, is to change your attitude towards what you think mistakes are. <clears throat> and in fact, what I've noticed, I mean, actually this whole thing could be a, a really a, a, um, a recipe for success in any area of your life, couldn't it? But what I've noticed is the difference between success and failure in any area is the person's attitudes towards mistakes. It's what they think mistakes actually mean that's going to determine whether they keep going and taking more action or whether they give up. And there's a couple of examples. You probably heard the story, or maybe you haven't, of Thomas Edison when he invented the light bulb, and he tried over a thousand different experiments to get the light bulb to work. Now, how many times has anybody that you know of, even yourself, have you ever tried something a thousand time, tried a thousand different ways to do something, and all of them failed, and you kept going? Well, very, very few people do. And they said to Thomas Edison, you know, how, how on earth could you keep going and try more than a thousand different ways to do something, and they all failed, and you, yet you kept going? And he said something very interesting, and he said, well, none of them were failures. All they were, every time I tried something and it didn't work, it just told me that that didn't work. So I knew that I was one step closer to finding the right answer. Now that's a hugely powerful belief to have, and that's of course why he got the result he did. So, you know, hopefully you won't need to try a thousand steps, but you might need to try a lot. But if you know with certainty you're going to get there, you're just going to say, uh, when you make a mistake or something doesn't work out and get you towards, towards where you want to go, you can say, great, well that didn't work, obviously that's not the right approach, so I'm one step closer to finding the right approach to get the solution. You know, it is a very, it's it's such a strange thing, this whole area, um, area of our attitude towards doing something wrong or making a mistake. But when you think about it, everything, everything we've achieved in our life, we've learnt through trial and error. I mean, think back to when you learnt to ride a bike. I mean, did you hop on a bike when you were four years old, or whatever it was, and fall off and go, oh, I fell off, that means I'll never be able to ride a bike? I don't think so. What was really going on? You you had the desire, you knew what you wanted, you wanted to learn to ride a bike. And you knew you were going to get there, but you just, just kept trying until you got there. And you didn't give any thought to the fact that you made a mistake. You didn't think, oh dear, that's something wrong, that's bad, I've, it means I'm a failure. No, you just kept getting back on the bike until you could ride it. So that's very much the same thing with healing your relationship. It's very much the same with anything in your life, anything you want to achieve, actually. You've got to just keep going until you get there. So those are the four steps. Just to recap, first off, decide if it's really what you want, if you really do want to save your marriage. Secondly, stop making excuses for your current situation and why things aren't working and why they haven't worked up until now. Thirdly, start taking some action. Take the first step, step by step. Just keep going, take action. And fourthly, just keep going until you get there. So just in conclusion then, you know, literally with all of the people I've met, all of the people I've worked with and helped, helped them to save their marriage, the only difference I saw was whether or not that person, and it doesn't rely on both of you, it relies on you, whether that person had made the decision that they were going to save their marriage or not. That's what it comes down to. Because a decision means belief, it means certainty, it means determination to do whatever it takes, and it means a, a lightness and a positive attitude that you're not phased by things going wrong because you know you're going to get there. So I really suggest if you're in that situation, and I'm presuming you are because that's why I presume you're listening to this, you know, use these four steps that I've outlined to, to decide about the future of your marriage and then take the action until you get the outcome that you really want. And remember, you can download that worksheet from the website liamnaden.com and that will, you will find that you can make some notes there and it might make the process a little bit clearer and easier as well. But it's a very simple process, but it requires a bit of thinking and a bit of the right sort of effort. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it helpful and useful as well. 
And if you did, it would be great if you could like or even provide a review of this podcast wherever you're listening to it from because that will really help us to get the message out to more people who I think could really benefit from this. And if you haven't already, go to my website growinginloveforlife.com and download the free report that's going to give you some powerful ways to make a positive impact on your marriage immediately. And of course, if you'd like to some more information about my private coaching program, or if you've got any questions, feel free to email me at liam at growinginloveforlife.com. So thanks for listening. All the best to you. I look forward to sharing some more information from you next time and maybe hearing from you at some stage. And I wish you all the best. Bye for now.